today we would understand the Lodge theory. We have already talked about the Cristeller and the Weber's theory and now we will understand how Lodge gave the modification for his theory. Now what Lodge believed was the basic aim should be profit maximization and it should not be like what Weber propounded where the main approach was least cost approach. So he ignored the Weber's idea or he discarded the Weber's idea of least cost approach and he said a market should be solely focused on profit maximization as a main aim and when you have profit maximization as a main aim the basic idea is the demand. Now Weber talked about basically the heavy industry, uh, heavy industries which are traditional for example iron and steel industry and there he applied the concept that least cost approach is the best fit model. However, uh, Losh tried to explain that profit maximization is best explained in the case of market oriented approach. So in case of weight gaining industries like bakery, beveries, you have uh, a kind of different approach where you have to focus on profit maximization and to work on profit maximization the basic idea is to work around the demand. Now what he tried to explain is if you have a boundary okay, and at this boundary you have two people so one is this side and another is this side both these persons are indifferent based on the availability of the product based on the approachability and based on the best price they could move in any direction. So both the person A and person B here are indifferent and they can go anywhere and that was the basic idea that, that Losh tried to undertake under his study where he tried to give profit maximization as the basic aim. Now what were the assumptions under Losh theory? First of all he said uh, the space is homogeneous, it's a kind of isotropic surface. So most of the assumptions were similar to what were propounded by Kristaller under his theory. He said mo most of the people have even or uniform purchasing power. The purchasing power of people are, is the same. The entrepreneurs have a sole objective of profit maximization. Then as you move away from the city center, the demand decreases because the transport cost is auto increase. So as you move away from the center where you have the product, as you go away, the transport cost would increase. As a result, there would be more uh, amount that you would be charging and consequently the demand for the product would be decreasing. People living in isolated spaces are evenly scattered. That, that was another thing he explained. Then he focused on monopolistic competition. He also tried to minimize the movement of con uh, customers through space. So he said people will are willing to go to the closest space in order to uh, get the best cost. And finally, he said there are new production plants that could enter whenever it's possible. Now, the first thing that he tried to explain was the concept of demand cone. He said P is the price that varies and Q is the quantity demanded. So as and as you move away from the city center, the price increases and hence the quantity demanded decreases. Now this increase in the price is also due to the increase in the transportation cost and as a result transport becomes a significant factor in understanding the rising cost as you move away from the center of the production. So you have the main production center here and as you move away the production cost would increase because the transportation cost would increase or in other words we can say the quantity demanded would decrease. Now, what are the K values that Losh gave? If we move back to Chris Teller, he tried to explain the K values as one that is towards the center. So it would have the whole one inside. Then you have towards the uh, corners, you would have three kind of uh, diversions for each point and towards the edges you would have it could be either inside or it could be outside so it would be half weighted. So he tried to give, uh, Cristela tried to give three basic kinds of K values that were 3, 4 and 7. However, Losh ignored the idea of Cristela and he said there could be uh, K values which could range from 3 to 21 and could be n number of K values that could be established. Cristela however assumed a uniform sphere of influence which was again rejected by Losh under his theory 
and he tried to explain that nature of the function varies from one uh, one location to another based on the uh, approach and the accessibility that we talk about so what he tried to explain was that under losh the k values are different and these k values explain the difference in the sphere of influence of different commodities so each commodity or each product that is being produced here has a kind of different sphere of influence and therefore k value would have a n number of range in contrast to what was given by crystal cristeller now understanding why he chose hexagon as a best suited site now this is a good uh, explanation to understand both for cristeller and losh now he started with a single market location so the first diagram talks about a single market location now next diagram explains how other industries started coming up at different parts within the same area so you had one industry that started and then new industries is industries started coming up slowly and gradually these industries tried to come closer to one another so that none of the area remains unserved so at present these are the unserved areas so they try to establish or come near so as to minimize the transport cost and provide maximum profit so he tried to explain that industries tried to clutter together however later on he said there were cases where there were overlapping of industries now if there is circle then there is overlapping so these were the zones of overlapping of the circle so if i remove the overlapping zones what would be the best shape that we would get the best shape in this case would be a hexagon as a result he said hexagons are the best areas to explain a market approach because under hexagon none of the area remains unserved so you have no area that remains unserved all the areas are served and each market is or each center is supplying to a specific zone or a specific area that is defined in this region so therefore he explained how hexagons are a best suited uh, location or best suited site now the next idea was the various stages of profit maximization so he started with the same concept explaining that factories try to concentrate for profit because the raw material of one factory could act as a raw uh, finished product for another factory or a raw material for another factory and there could be interrelations within the various factories that could be established so he said for profit maximization to occur factories concentrate for profit and when there is a kind of shrinkage of the area there is mal distribution so you have a kind of distribution that is concentrated in this area and this is spared in the other area so there is kind of mal distribution that occurs because of the shrinkage of the area and then he explained these circular patterns are a kind of framework that provide or decide the future of the industry so which industries would go in which location would be guided by the circular patterns that exist in the first stage so that was the first idea that he gave then he talked about the new market boundaries so initially he said m is lets the product cost however when you have the product cost that moves from p1 to p2 so you have a here and the product cost moves from p1 to p2 so when it was at p1 this was the area that it could serve however as the product cost went up the area served by this industry decreased so the market area for this became smaller however b on the other hand had a kind of increase in the market area so whatever area was unserved by a was now now captured by b so there was a kind of increase in the market area or a new market boundary that was defined for b in contrast to a so this was the previous boundary of a as you can see here this was the previous boundary of a and this boundary shifted this way so you have the new market boundary for a which was this what there was a squeezing of the market boundaries which became this for a b tried to 
occupy the remaining space and capture the market area and this was the new market area that was captured for b as a result there was new market boundary that was defined for b and it shifted from e q d1 to e q d2 so that was the new boundary for market area b so market area b kind of captured a section from the market area a now next is understanding the development now <coughs> lorsch strongly believed that development starts from the bottom of the system in contrast to what was given by kristaller so he said first of all hexagons are the best suited site and there are nest of hexagons so let's say i have one hexagon i have another hexagon and i have a third hexagon so all the hexagons would be placed one over the other in a form of net now let's say i have one hexagon this is which is this another hexagon which is kind of rotated which is this okay so all the hexagons i have kind of vary in different proportion now what is happening is he tried to explain that to match or to obtain a maximum degree of spatial association of the uh, central places we need to rotate them so one is this and another hexagon let's say is this in order to achieve a kind of maximum spatial association i need to rotate the top hexagon uh, so that it overlays the bottom hexagon so the first thing he tried to explain was we are starting from the bottom the next thing he tried to explain was there is a nest of hexagons and the third thing was there is a kind of important element of rotation which occurs so as to maximize the degree of spatial association so that's the key so what i am trying to do by rotating here i am trying to align all the points i would say in a uh, uniform fashion and when he tried to align those he came up with different sectors and he said each hexagon could be divided into 12 sectors six would be the rich sectors and six would be the poor sectors by rich and poor he meant that six would be the sectors where you would have good industrial growth and good market area and six would be the areas which would be dependent on the remaining six so he tried to uh, cut down the hexagon into 12 sectors with six six rich sectors and six poor sectors and finally there was the superimposition of the various k values that he propounded however kristaller did not work around with the superimpositions of k values now what was the merit of lorsch model lorsch tried to maximize the purchases that occur locally he tried to explain that we do not assume settlement as just based on the three principles that kristaller gave that is marketing transport and administration but he said the real market is a combination of many many factors besides these three factors he also explained that we are trying to remove the limits of uh, considering our study limited to threshold sphere of influence in k values so he tried to elaborate that concept and finally he tried to give the existence of specialized product centers which came up when you have the sectors of rich and poor that are defined however there were certain demerits for this uh, uh, lorsch program or uh, sorry lorsch theory he said that the uh, his basic idea of demand was over emphasized which was criticized by many scholars his theory was more complex and abstract to understand and uh, applying that to real world was really hard because the com concept was much more uh, abstract and direct applicability became difficult and again there was uh, issues of local interdependence which could not be sorted out because there are some inter industries which are locally interdependent on one another now what was the basic uh, differences between kristaller and lorsch both of them used the concept of uh, range threshold and hierarchy and talked about the triangular patterns in the hexagonal market areas however kristaller model started from top to bottom lorsch moved from the bottom in the hierarchy and he said as you move up you have small areas that start urbanizing together so he started from the bottom of the hierarchy 
Then Cristela tried to explain the urban systems from the frontiers. However, Lodge tried to explain the development of services in the area of dense settlements as in the case of Europe. Cristela focused mainly on retailing while Lodge focused mainly on local manufacturing and the local uh, area drainage was his main key aspect. His idea was theoretically more accurate, however, Cristela's uh, uh, idea was more applicable to planning and was much more into a kind of practical outlay because in reality, it's very hard to apply the Lodge's model. So with this, we cover one of the important models that's the Lodge theory and we'll be covering more uh, theories related to uh, settlement and hierarchies in the upcoming sections. Have a good day ahead.